The rain fell in heavy sheets. It pounded the pavement. Streetlights cast a dim glow through the downpour. A lone figure sat on a park bench, her shoulders slumped, her hair clung to her face in wet strands. I don't care about getting soaked. I welcome the cold. It matches how I feel inside, numb, empty, tears mixed with raindrops on her cheeks. She stared at the ground, unseeing. Time seemed to stand still in the darkness. How long had she been sitting there? Minutes? Hours? It didn't matter. Nothing mattered anymore. I hugged myself tightly, rocking back and forth slightly. The world felt muffled and far away, like she was underwater, drowning in her own thoughts. Sarah's mind raced with painful memories, with doubts and fears, with a deep, aching sadness that threatened to swallow her whole. Sarah's thoughts spiraled downward into a pit of despair. She felt worthless, unlovable, a burden to everyone around her. What was the point of it all? The pain was too much to bear. I thought about ending it, about making the hurt stop forever. The idea terrified me, but it also offered a strange comfort. An escape. Sarah's hands shook as she considered it. Could she really do it? Images flashed through her mind, of her parents finding out, of the few people who might miss her. But the dark thoughts persisted. They whispered that no one would really care, that she'd be doing everyone a favor. I dug my nails into my palms, trying to ground myself, to push away the suicidal urges. But they clung to me like a heavy fog, clouding my judgment, making it hard to think clearly. I felt so lost, so alone. Sarah had always been shy, quiet. She struggled to connect with others, to make friends. The few acquaintances she had barely knew her. They didn't see past her awkward exterior, didn't understand the pain she hid inside. At school, I felt invisible. I ate lunch alone, worked on group projects by myself. No one invited me to parties or hangouts. I told myself it was better this way, that I preferred being alone. But deep down, the loneliness ate away at me. Home wasn't much better. Her parents were always busy, distracted. They didn't notice how withdrawn she'd become, how she rarely left her room. I yearned for someone to talk to, someone who would really listen. But I had no one. Social media made it worse. Sarah saw classmates posting about their fun weekends, their inside jokes, their seemingly perfect lives. It only highlighted how alone she was, how different. She felt like an alien, like she didn't belong in this world at all. Sarah's legs were numb from sitting so long. She stood up slowly. Her soaked clothes clung to her skin. She shivered in the cool night air. But something made her start walking, one foot in front of the other. She had no destination in mind, just a need to move, to do something, anything. The rain had slowed to a drizzle. Sarah's shoes squelched with each step. She hugged herself tightly as she walked. The streets were eerily empty, silent except for the patter of rain. Sarah's mind still raced with dark thoughts, but the movement helped. It gave her something to focus on, a small distraction from the pain inside. She walked for what felt like hours, through neighborhoods she didn't recognize, past darkened houses and shuttered storefronts, Sarah felt like a ghost, drifting through a world that couldn't see her. But she kept going, one step at a time. The hairs on the back of Sarah's neck stood up. Something felt off, wrong. She glanced behind her. A figure stood in the shadows, watching her. Fear gripped her chest. She walked faster, her heart pounding. Footsteps echoed behind her, getting closer. Sarah broke into a run, panic rising in her throat. She darted down a side street, trying to lose her pursuer. But the footsteps kept coming. Faster now. A hand grabbed her arm, yanked her backward. Sarah screamed. She saw a glint of metal. A knife. Terror coursed through her veins. She fought back with everything she had, kicking, clawing, desperate to break free. Somehow she managed to wrench away, to stumble forward. Sarah ran faster than she ever had before, her lungs burning, legs aching. But she didn't stop couldn't stop. The will to survive drove her forward. Sarah ran until she couldn't anymore, until her legs gave out. She collapsed in a convenience store parking lot, gasping for air, shaking uncontrollably, but alive. She had fought, and she had won. With trembling hands, Sarah pulled out her phone. She dialed 911, reported what had happened. The police arrived quickly. They took her statement, offered comfort and support. For the first time in a long time, Sarah felt seen, heard, 
As the adrenaline faded, Sarah was hit by a realization. She wanted to live. The fear she'd felt. The desperation to escape. It had awakened something in her. A fierce determination to survive. To keep fighting. Sarah knew her struggles weren't over. That she had a long road ahead. But for the first time in months, she felt a glimmer of hope. A tiny spark of light in the darkness. And she was determined to nurture that spark. To fan it into a flame. To find her way back to life.